Hello and welcome. We are the Red Devils Advocates, and the joined by Akira and Sean, the midfield tree. How is everyone doing? Yeah, quite good. I mean, you should be. Two wins this week. Back to back. We had the game against Fulham. I mean, foregone conclusion. On the Twitter poll, I think 100% of people said we were going to win. So it goes to show what people think about the teams like Fulham and Sheffield United. But we did concede first. And yeah. Sean, that meme you said was very apropos. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> but when you concede an early, you know, an early goal and you're like, hmm, I should take this a bit seriously and just sit up a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, that, that first stock on, you know, smash when you lose it. And you're like, okay, let's get serious. Let's get serious. And we did. Cavani with a tap in. Yes. Well, I mean, it was a bit more than that, though. Like, the build-up play was quite beautiful as well. You had hmm. Fernandez with that absolute rocket of a shot coming back out from the post. Then managed to pick it up in midfield, put it down the wing, back to Fernandez. It's a nice ball across. And, I mean, if they just had a better goalkeeper, <laughs> maybe he wouldn't have fumbled it. They have one of the best keepers. And yet. In the I mean... I mean, he, you say that. He you might say be that. the best, but he is one of the best. Right. But you still have to scroll. Yeah, you definitely have to scroll to see Ariola, but like... Oh, yeah, this guy. Okay. I was very surprised to see that he was actually playing for them. I was like, I swear he was a big name <laughs> a couple years ago. <laughs> a few years ago. I, I can't remember which team. Didn't but... he go to... Was it... Real Madrid and then like PSG or something. Maybe. I'm not sure. I know he was around the big teams. I'm pretty sure he played for Real Madrid. As they're like oh, yeah. reserve keeper. <laughs> <laughs> he might have. But I think it goes to show the United Way is coming back where we're not so much relying on individuals per se, but the whole team to do their job. We're relying mm. on Wan Bissaka to clean up the right hand side, and we're relying on Fernandez to, you know, push on from the midway point up into the opposition box. We're counting on Rashford to mess people up and make them look silly on either wing, and for Cavani to just be an absolute menace in the box. I think this is a good United performance, and we're going to see. We're going to need to see a lot more performances like this if we're going to win this league. You say it was a good performance, but the first goal, obviously from Fulham, was a bit of a shamble anyway. like They played that, that good old Burnley ball. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but it's straight down. And good old Zonal marking does what it always does. And <laughs> the gear just... But I watched it back, and he, yeah, he, he like he puts himself out there a little bit, but he kind of just plops to the floor, mm. <laughs> and it's like you could have done more with it, man, because mm. there's no way from an angle like that he's going for near post. Like he's always going across goal because he has way more space there. Yeah, and the gear's just like plopped himself down closest to the post, and I'm like, you could have saved that. You easily could have stopped that goal. Yeah, that, that is true. We've seen his fair share of blunders. De Gea, while he is better than he was last season, I don't think he's back to his all-time best. Mm. And we're going to see a lot of goals like that where, you know, the player's on a one-on-one -on -one and he could stretch his leg out a bit more. He could make himself a bit bigger and he just fumbles it. I, I think when you talk about the match in the, as a whole, the the general performance from minute one to minute 90 I think the attitude of the players the spirit of the players to continue to go on and win that match is to be commended we have seen in previous seasons like we've had five or six seasons now absolute shit so we've seen games where we've conceded first and we kind of like accept it we're just like, okay well this game's a write-off 
you see a, a goal go in and it just finishes 1 0. And I think we are seeing, I hate to say it, the 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 corners being turned and we're now going on a run of games where we're just going out and winning doesn't matter how many we're conceding we're, qu- we're putting another one in but, but these games that we're winning it's all by fine margins andy a lot of fine margins fine margins <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously like you talking of like top form players right now the way pogba put in that shot it, it was like he knew what he was doing. He lined it up. He was like, you know what? I'm going for this. And it worked. And to quote Pogba, he said, this is now his favorite goal because it was with his left foot. Jeez. Oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Yes. But then that's because he said that, that's another fine margin. Because that's not his strong foot, clearly, because it's his left foot. I wouldn't say that's yeah. a fine margin, though. But the thing is, like, if he took it with his strong foot and it had gone in, it's just a banger. Mm. Because he took it with his weak foot and it's gone in, it's an absolute worldie. Yeah. But then, because it's his left foot, that's where the fine margin sits in. That could have been a corner flag shot. But it wasn't. But it wasn't. <laughs> We need to worry about what because, could because of fine margins, Andy. <laughs> worry about what is a yeah. no. Worry about what was. It could have been a miss, but it wasn't. It was an absolute world class goal. It is one of my favorite goals for by a Man United player. It's I don't know. I think Wayne Rooney's in the Manchester derby is still my all time favorite. But well, the bicycle kick. Yeah, that that is a mm, chef's kiss of a goal. But that goal from Pogba is absolutely perfect, as perfect as some other performances we've seen over the years in Man United mm. shirt. The like everything he did in that little moment of time was just amazing. Got it onto his weaker foot, boom, just in. Nothing, no one's stopping that. We are seeing Paul Pogba at his best, and it's a shame because he's leaving. <laughs> but like well, the last few games, he's been on an absolute tear, mm. in my opinion. I think you heard us saying, if you don't win us this flipping cup, you're not going. Like you're not allowed <laughs> to leave until we win. So now he's actually putting effort in because he wants to go. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, again to quote Pogba, he said that he's happy right now, and he's playing well because he's happy, and. He's happy because he's winning. And the moment that we start losing again, you're going to see him angry again. He's right, I'm off. Get out of <laughs> <It's all right. laughs> Well, I guess that will really show his character because when people are winning, when people are having success, it's easy to be happy. You know, everything's going your way. When things are going against you, when little decisions are going against you, where it feels like everyone's against you, conspiracies how how is your character then what is your head like then how is your mentality in those kind of moments and that's what we need to see from Pogba we've seen it in games when we go one down that's fine but we need to see it when we actually lose a game because I think we are unbeaten in the league away for about a year over a year now so oh away yeah but I mean we we saw it against Arsenal when he got tired and mm. gave away a penalty and blamed it on being tired. Yeah, so that, 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 that answers your question. <laughs> well, we since then because I'm not going to hold him to that three <laughs> months later. Like he said it on a live interview. I am holding that to him three I'm, years I'm, later. <laughs> I'm not holding him to that years later because man's tired, isn't he? He like. I think he was very frustrated then. People say things. He was an absolute idiot for causing that foul. Absolutely. And he would admit that. But he's then gone on to work on himself. He hasn't done it again since. And I think that is what we should judge players on. You make a mistake, that you obviously get pelters for it. But how do you react to it? How do you come back from that? This is where we separate kids from adults. It's character development. Absolutely. If you're going to be making the same mistake three games down in... In the, in the league, then it's like we got to look at this boy and be like maybe you should be on the bench. But he has improved himself. 
games against Villa, games against Fulham, other games, he has turned the corner personally, I think, and mm. absolute world class goal. What a goal. Yeah, 100%. I definitely agree with that. Like, if this was the Pogba that was playing all these years, I wouldn't have the opinion that I have on him. But knowing what he can do and seeing what he did at Juventus, seeing what he did for France in the World Cup, and then seeing what he comes and does at United, like, can you really blame me for having the opinion that I have on him? <laughs> absolutely not. Absolutely not. I think on what you said about holding him to that comment he said, you know, I, I feel a bit like let's give him some time to change our minds. I think okay. your opinion about his six or seven years now I don't even know how long it's been. I think that is very valid. And I won't knock you for that opinion. I think he's been bad longer than he's been good. And he has to answer for those crimes, in my opinion. I call those crimes because you're you're a world champion. You are that good. You are a world champion. In in the midfield, no one's touching you. Mm. France, we saw him mock people. The Croatians, he mocked them. And when it comes back to like the week in, week out. He doesn't want to be there. He doesn't want to be in Manchester. He didn't look like it. So I completely, like, I'm not trying to have a go at you. Your opinion is valid when it comes to Pogba's long-term performance for us. But I think right now he's in the form of his life. He, he is playing with some very good players. I think he appreciates Fernandez a lot. And we're, we're seeing the absolute best out of him. We all appreciate Fernandez a lot. Yeah. He's the people's captain. He's the people's captain. <laughs> I guess with that, we shall move on. Um, so you, did you have any last remarks? I did. I, I had two two more things I wanted to address, just because I... Uh, well, everyone knows I like shitting on a good player or two. And I've only shot on one player so far. So um, I'd like to shot on one more, really. And how many times can I say shit in one sentence? <laughs> <laughs> well, can you uh, just quickly remind me, why exactly did we buy Harry Maguire, Andy? He was Spe bought... Specifically. He was bought to yes. score goals from headers in corners. Okay. He was bought to be a commanding force in the back. Okay. And to be... Rio Ferdinand, basically. Okay. So when that corner goes in, when we're 1 1, and Maguire jumps up and he's right in front of goal, the goalkeeper is to the far side of him. So he's got a nice, nice open space. I'm going to say at least five yards of space in that goal, which is like, oh, nice, nice and open. And he headed it straight towards the corner flag. <laughs> I don't know. And what made me shocked was how lenient the commentators were on him. Yeah. So, it's like he's the golden boy. Like, yeah. Above Nobody's above criticism. If you're, you're not doing the job that you're paid to be doing, you should be critiqued. I'll go back to what I said last time. Give him some time on the bench to get his head straight. Cause I agree. Yeah. He's just not on it. I. <laughs> Maguire rise, do not waste my money. <laughs> So I think the commentator essentially just said, I'd expect him to score that. He should be scoring more goals this season. I'm so, not mad. I'm disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> We're halfway through the season at this point. Mm -hmm. What is he doing? He's had plenty of chances to score headers. McTominay has embarrassed him. Pogba has embarrassed him in this field. What is he doing? He left his skills back in Leicester. I don't understand. You go on the Premier League website, you check all the stats, and he's the top of all, like, interceptions. He's the top of uh, clearances, headers, stat padding. Stats, stat padding. Because that Fulham goal, Maguire is not on his man. Lookman is free. Because Paul Pogba is not a centre-back. You cannot be expecting him to, to deal with that. Mm -hmm. Bailly is left because he's zonal marking. Maguire is ha holding hands with Luke Shaw. Marking the same player. What's going on there? Ridiculous. But it like it, that ball shouldn't even get to the hair. No. Maguire should clear that out. It's because he knows the hair is really good. Like he's just Ooh. 
I think it goes back to Maguire's got something in him. He doesn't try to clear balls that he knows are going to be goals. So he can't be blamed for them. I, I think that's what's going on. And call me a conspiracy theorist, but I think he only clears out balls that he can definitely get to. If there's a 50-50, he just leaves it. But in all... Like, triumph starts with try and ends with umph. You're not giving us either. Like, <laughs> I'm doing 50 yeah. 50. There's still 50% chance it's going to go your way. But if you leave it, then it's like, if you're not going to do anything, then nothing's going to happen. We've seen it time and time again this season. I mean, we have. Do you remember the, um, the goal that you blamed on Fernandez? Which, to be fair, it was. It was Fernandez's fault for trying to get the ball out like that. But then I brought your attention back to Maguire and Fred and their ability, or should I say lack of, to clear the ball. <laughs> Maguire is an expensive Phil Jones. <laughs> Phil Jones is an expensive Phil Jones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Just bang him on the bench for a bit. Honestly. Time out, like yeah. Make him do a mind map or something of what he wants to <laughs> do. Flash a B. He can get his head straight. Sometimes you just need some time off. Like, like need some time off. I agree. I genuinely think that with well, Greece, Greece rattled him because he's not been the same. It's not been the same. Nah. He's not been the same. Like seriously, I do actually think that is a good strategy because we've done it. Everywhere else on the pitch, if someone's been lacking in form, they've been on the bench and someone is hungry to take that spot. And as good as Maguire thinks he is, Bailly, Lindelof can do that job. We don't need to do five at the back. I think Maguire should be sat on the bench for a game or two and just think. And the next time he gets a shot, he's going to perform. Mm. That's what we've seen when we bench some of these you know, top earners. They come back with a chip on their shoulder with something to prove. And I think Maguire, he, it would actually benefit him, I think, if he was benched. The final point I'd like to make, though, Ruben off the cheek. Now, he has potential to be a good talent. Unfortunately, with Chelsea buying the world, he's been shipped out to Fulham. And... As good as he is, he's not on the level to be doing what he did to the United defence. <laughs> <laughs> and again, it just makes me wonder, uh, do the coaching staff actually see what happens? Do specifically, like, Edward... <laughs> like, that, does he actually look at our matches and be like, you know what, that's a good team, that's a good result... We did well there. I, I, I don't understand how a a mid team table player, yeah, is running on us as if it was Mo Salah or Aguero or, or like Wayne Rooney of old. I personally think Loftus Cheek is a good player with a no, dense high potential. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that 100. Yeah. percent But he's not getting the game time to get that. Mm. You see, they're just letting anyone on the field take up time <laughs> when there are other people who could do better. Not naming names because the name has already been named. But I, I, I do think Lampard has a headache when his loan spell ends. I, I think Loftus Cheek is good enough to start for Chelsea week in week out. Honestly. Mm. You know, I see the plays they've got. I don't rate Jorginho that much. I don't rate Kovacic that much. Don't know why they bought him because that loan spell was average at best. Kante, I don't know why he's benching Kante unless he's injured. He's one of the world's best players. He's a world champion too. He doesn't like him. I think that's it. I mean, <laughs> hey, send him up to Manchester. We'll have him. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have him. Uh, love to see. I have teased. United signing him, and I think I don't think we need him now. I think that boat is passed, mm. that ship has sailed. But I think a year or two ago, Loftus Cheek would have slotted perfectly in our midfield personally. Mm. I think 
I hope he gets the career he deserves and he doesn't end up as certain other players who had all the talent in the world, but they just know where it worked out for them. Yeah. He should be a bigger club, mate. If Chelsea doesn't know what to do with him, send him to Tottenham, send him to Arsenal, I don't care. He is a top, top talent, in my opinion. And we move on to Liverpool in the FA Cup. And this is the match, I guess, casuals or neutrals thought they would see in the Premier League. Liverpool played a lot differently. They were on the front foot definitely this time. And United kind of played the same way, you know, counter-attacking football, careful passing, trying to be careful in position in possession. Trying to be. <laughs> <laughs> You were trying. <laughs> um, what did you guys think about the FA Cup match? I'll, I'll let Akira take the floor for this one. <laughs> um, I think it was a bit of a shambles, not gonna lie. Like, these were just goals that were getting let in for no reason. Like, it was literally as if got like the ball was going past and people were like, Completely other direction. Like, I have no idea what was going on. Like nobody seemed to be in the right place. Nobody was paying attention to like the other players. The obvious people who don't work were not working. <laughs> but, like goals that went in should not even have got past that point. Like they shouldn't have got past the defense. They really shouldn't have. It was just yeah. Like obviously we got three goals, but we still let two in. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't impressed. I, well, actually, no, I was impressed by, obviously, Mo Salah's performance because he was just running rings around everyone. So in terms of him, I'm impressed, but I'm not impressed that we let that happen. That shouldn't mm. happen. Mm. I'm upset. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Sure. So, this match was, for me, I want to say we should have lost the match. Like, the players that played well and influenced United still had stinky games. Like, I don't know on what earth these commentators were watching, but to give Paul Pogba man of the match, the man, he was flopping passes, he was giving the ball away, he was making rash tackles. Uh, he, I don't know what they saw in him, but... To go back to your earlier of, he's been playing really well, and he has been. This match, he did not. This match was the, oh, I said I was happy because we're winning. I'm kind of bored of winning. Let's see if I can mess it up. I don't know. I don't think he had a bad game. Oh, he had a terrible I don't think it was his best game. But I don't think he had a bad game because of what he did well really worked out for us. And I think we missed that strong presence in the midfield. He was being a nuisance. He did drag Salah and didn't get penalized for it, which, you know, is always a plus. But there were there was more than one occasion where he was on the ball way too long and he could have just given it to someone if he did it immediately, but he held onto the ball too long, which invited the Liverpool players, which they, they kind of doubled up on him because obviously Klopp's a smart man. And yeah, I don't think it was his worst game for us. I don't think he had like an absolute terrible game, but I don't think he was the star of our team either. No. It was just a bit weird, like the overall playing, because it felt like people were having these moments where nothing was going on in their head and then they were switched on again. Mm. And they were switched off again. It was like, what? What was happening? Yeah. yeah. Like, they were engaged and then not engaged. And, yeah. So, so it's a bit weird. <laughs> I'm not just going to, like, absolutely write on Pogba because he wasn't the only one doing it. McTominay had a stinker no, of a match. He was dead today. Like, he was dead. I don't know what his problem was. <laughs> the guy had so many chances to put a ball through or something, and he just... Like Brexit ball, mate. What are you doing? 
<laughs> like we're, we're trying to come back. <laughs> we don't need this kind of style of football right now. He and, saw Paul Pogba do the 40 yard pass. I was like, I can do that. I and then gave it to the yeah, Liverpool man. Yeah, can't, can't do it. Can't do it. And then this one's going to be a bit of a wild shout for some people, but Rashford, he may have put through the first goal and he may have scored the second one, but the boy was doing the same nonsense that he's been doing the last couple of weeks. He's been holding onto the ball when he shouldn't be. He's been releasing the ball when he shouldn't be. And I actually noticed a couple of times, I think there's something going on between him and Cavani. Cavani refused to release the ball to Rashford <laughs> when Rashford was clear through. <laughs> and Cavani was just like, no, 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 I'm holding this ball. This is yep. my ball now. <laughs> yep. I was like, please, Lord, this is Cavani. Please, Lord, give me someone to give the ball to. So he's Rashford, not you. Um <laughs> Ooh, oh. I don't know. I thought Rashid was very good today. And that's because he was playing on the left wing. Mm. That's his favourite position, in my opinion. I think that's where he is best used because he's got a lot of speed. He was tormenting whoever the right back was. Trent Alexander-Arnold didn't want anything to do with that man because he stayed all the way up in the, in, at the front of the pitch. And Rashford was just eaten. And I'd like to apologise for Williams, the Liverpool guy, because I don't think he's going to play again for Liverpool against oh. Man United, because Rashford tortured the boy. And Klopp shouldn't thing. have done that. Klopp should not have done that to the boy. He just threw him under the bus. Rashford made... Oh, Rashford had him in his pocket. It was, yeah. not a good, it was not a good display from the young kid. But Rashford, I thought he had a very good performance. I don't think he was perfect at all, but I think because he's on the left, he has more options. So mm. there were times where he not made Thiago and Thiago had to bring him down. There were times where he just ran past Williams. There was obviously the goal. There was the time he put Greenwood in. I think being on the left gives him more freedom. And that familiar sight of seeing Rashford run and then the ball comes into his stride and then there's a player there but the player doesn't know what to do he doesn't know what Rashford's going to do mm. I think Rashford's very familiar on the left hand side and I think for my money I thought he had a good game I, I thought it was really good I thought Cavani wasn't good today though I he, did not think he, he, he did not get fed the ball enough and that again feeds into my I think there's something going on between Rashford and Cavani <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Because obviously Cavani did it to Rashford, but Rashford did it to Cavani a couple times as well. He passed it back to Shaw, he passed it to McTominay, he passed it to Greenwood. He, like the man was not giving Cavani the ball. <laughs> <laughs> and like there was one time where Rashford broke through, and this is why I said that he had a stinky performance. Yeah? Rashford broke through, and he had Cavani and Van der Beek right there. He's easiest pass of your life. And he chose to keep the ball and he fluffed it. And it's like, he kept doing that same thing, but he's not learning from his past mistakes anymore. He's making the same mistakes with the last like two or three matches. And it feels like just because you can do a good performance, even though you're making mistakes, doesn't mean that you should stop learning from your mistakes. 100%. I agree with that. I think... You can say that about Cavani, he wasn't fed the ball. But that happens to all of our number nines this season. Like we've seen it with Martial as well. He doesn't get the ball enough for me for my money. Mm. Cavani was starved of possession, absolutely. But I think when he did have the ball, I don't think he did anything terrific with it. Maguire Next. that that absolute pathetic war to Cavani. Cavani, Cavani's first touch sets up the goal for Salah's second. Yeah, that was upsetting. And Cavani's as much to blame as Maguire is there. I feel Cavani should have been taken off from Martial and not Greenwood because Greenwood had an interesting game because there were two chances where he could have passed it, didn't, mm -hmm. and went nowhere. Greenwood's a selfish player. He's not a winger. He's a striker. He's a number nine. He is a number nine. And it worked out for him on the third attempt because he's scoring those all day long, even though the Liverpool player tried to bark him or whatever. Greenwood is an absolute 
machine when it comes to that area of the pitch. He's not passing the ball. <laughs> and I think yeah. we see that kind of game come back to Rashford a little bit, where in the other games he would have passed it, he would have set up man. I think if he sees Martial, he's setting him up because he trusts him. I don't know if he trusts Cavani like that. So he's not going to release the ball. He trusts Greenwood because he gave, <laughs> he set him up. <laughs> But I think it's like wingers being selfish. Essentially, what we have is three strikers playing at any one time, which is why we're not seeing that fluidity. Martial is arguably the least selfish of all of our forwards. Because that he, is will a wild deep, statement. he will come deep. He has the hold-up play. He is set up mm. Ashford. I'm, I'm, that's, for my opinion, no, no. Martial, I think he's the least selfish out of all of our forwards. And you see in the goal tally, obviously, percent <laughs> of that is because my man can't score for shit. But he is also being very, like, giving with the ball. No, I, I agree with that. I was like, if you think of Martial for the last couple of seasons, he was one of the most selfish players that you've ever... Like, going back to like, the Ronaldo days. Mm. But, like, this season, he has been... Like as we spoke about before, like if Pogba goes, do you think Martial could just slot into into that position because he has been given all the assists? So I, I do agree with that, but it's just it's wild to think about. Salah got two goals, which is upsetting because that's Luke Shaw's side, and I thought Luke Shaw had a good game. The, so Luke Shaw was trying his best. He had Salah and Trent to deal with. And then the guys that are supposed to support you aren't there. Mm. Like you said that Maguire and Cavani was at full for one of the goals. One one of the goals, I can't remember if it was the first one or the second one, but um, I thought it was Maguire, but it was actually Lindelof. And I was like, what are you doing? Like you're supposed to be the good defender. <laughs> <laughs> well, those two don't work well together. Yeah, do that... they? Maguire and Lindelof. Like we were saying, those oh two. Oh my god, work. it's jam and cheese. <laughs> Separately, they're fine on sandwiches, yeah. but you put them together, and what is this? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. That is a great analogy, and I'm using that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't work well together. They have the same weaknesses, so it's just the same person, the same weaknesses times two. And they look so similar from the camera mm -hmm. angle. You can't tell who's who. So you're just like, oh, Maguire, because he's the bad kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that first goal, unforgivable. The second goal, even worse, because we had more time to deal with it. <sighs> Liverpool can tend to switch on like that, and we're in trouble. Trent Alexander-Arnold looked like he was going to score a couple of times. Mm. He doesn't look like he's under any pressure out there. He looks like he's having fun with his mates in the park. Yeah, to be fair, though, like, like, so the Shaw yeah. when he's attacking, like I was saying to my dad, like they're still giving Shaw so much space despite what he's been doing recently. Like the guy has literally got that entire third to himself to just stroll mm. around, and we gave exactly the same to Trent today. Like, have, do we learn nothing from our own style of play? <laughs> yeah, it was it was baffling to see some of the choices that we were making. I did think Luke Shaw had a good game though because he was defending, he was attacking, he was doing everything. And you said he wasn't getting the support. Rashford does not track back. We pull up Martial when he doesn't do this. We pull up Pogba when he doesn't do this. We pull up Greenwood when he doesn't do it. Greenwood never flipping tracks back. Yeah. I mean, he did in today's game, but oh, it was not good. It was not good. Rashford never tracks back, and no one pulls up on this. Who does he trust? Quickly, Martial. But here, here, here. Martial. Here, here. So, <laughs> one matter. <laughs> You also is it here? So what are you going to do? He was not playing today. You see the kids go out. No, no, they're not getting this. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? No, 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 man. <laughs> no, he's not. He's not seeing a blade of grass today. Oh. But I think again, these are the type of games that show the United character 
I thought this was a bit of a weird one when the commentator said it. They compared Bruno Fernandes to Eric Cantona. Mm. And as soon as they said it, I was like, nah, get, nah, get out. What did I thought about it? Oh, they have a point, you know. <laughs> they have a bit of a point, you know. The guy has scored 16 goals since, I think, it's just, that's the season. That's the season. Yeah, that's the season. Like, the guy has made such an impact that you could compare him to... Like the the one man army that was Cantona, mm-hmm. uh, he brought so much like faith and morale back into the team, and I can uh, like say with with my chest, if we didn't have Fernandez, <laughs> we would be around the Arsenal position right now. <laughs> we, we would be comfortably sixth at least without Fernandez. Those sixteen goals or whatever. So many W's we got with with him, and I do like that he was rested a bit, and I do like how it's it's like the failsafe hit in in the case of an emergency, break it. There's break Fernandez. Fernandez. Yeah, break up the Fernandez. Get the Bruno. Yeah, and there he is. The impact he has is just immense. Van der Beek is an absolute great player, but he's not touching the pitch before Fernandez or Pogba while they're still fit still wearing United colours in the Premier League. And that's just something we got to deal with. The pundits, the fans, they need to stop crying because this is what happens with teams that win the Premier League. They have players that are good and they would walk into many other teams in the world, but their players better than them in this own club. So deal with it. Like, Van der Beek knew what he was signing for. We knew, Van der Sar knew what Van der Beek was walking into. This is Man United. This is a good Man United. This isn't the United that had Fellaini in midfield and Pereira pinging in 15-yard passes up to the throw-in. No, this is a on-point United. Van der Beek, he's going to wait. I think he's not going to be a regular start until next season, and he's got to deal with it. I think there were there were people calling for him to end in the transfer request. Why? Why? What? what, what? I think people are very... Uh, reactionary when it comes to van der Beek's treatment and i don't think it's been that bad like i understand with how flippy floppy Pogba's performances have been that you can get van der Beek in for a couple more matches but if you look at all the the good united teams like you have three four even five players sometimes competing for that one position and as you said, like all these players could walk into any other team in the Premiership and be starters. Like if you think of like our old lineups, you had um, like, just up front Rooney, Tevez, uh, Zaha, Smith, uh, Hernandez. Uh-huh. We had Hernandez. Uh, uh, so uh, Berbatov. But yeah, Berbatov. Thank you. Like you have all these people. Like there's only two positions there. Uh-huh. At least three of those men are sitting on the bench. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can't be complaining when a random guy, and I say random guy because no one really knew about, like, the Dutch league before the last couple of years, like, where you had, uh, was it De Jong, De Ligt, and Mm -hmm. himself. There was Zayek as well. Yes. You can't be complaining when he's getting out, like, outplayed by Pogba and Fernandes, who are... He should want a world champion. Mm-hmm. And Fernandez is highly rated by Ronaldo and the world right now. Mm-hmm. He's such right, a fire. Exactly. Not everyone's going to remember this or say it, but I think Ramba Saka played really well. Whoever was on the left wing didn't really have a sniff. Mm-hmm. Ramba Saka, and I know he gets blamed for this, but I actually think this is a manager's decision. Ramba Saka tucks in which means someone needs to come into the right back position, which is usually Pogba in the in the case like this. Wambisaka becomes like the third centre back because Luke Shaw is going up and down. More time is mm-hmm. up. So Wambisaka has to actually support Lindelof and Maguire. And I know you want both of your fullbacks to be bombing forward, but it's not actually practical for that to be the case. You are going to concede a lot of goals that way. And Wambisaka is an absolute, Three goals. Wall, <laughs> absolute wall in the back. My case in point, exactly. I think it goes to show 
the spirit of United to take that step back and to take it again and to be like, no, we're pushing forward. No, we're going for that goal. We're going for the win. Fernandez with an absolute perfect free kick. Finger beauty. And indeed. He wouldn't have got it without a certain player though, Andy. That's true. That is true. I mean he got fouled. And well done for him to get for getting fouled. I mean, was he really fouled though? <laughs> that is the question. Oh, no, that's a big foul, man. Big foul. No, 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 no. Commentators yeah. are saying that he felt a bit of a touch and decided to go down. <laughs> <laughs> when they said that, I'm like, the guy is literally pressing on my man's chest. Yeah, like he's literally got his leg out as well. He's like proper bending this man over. Oh, he I felt a bit of a touch and went down. I think you'll find that commentator is an Arsenal fan. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I wasn't sure which one you're talking about, but I was like, that is a martial arts takedown. What are you talking about? <laughs> like, man grabbed his whole shoulder. I just like threw him down, treat him like a sack of potatoes, and that. Like, <laughs> No, I don't look like a foul yeah. to me. It's a bit of a sticky one still. I don't yeah. know if that's an actual foul. He's got. It felt a bit of a tough. We'll get out of here. Even Ian Wright after the game was like, "Oh, I don't think there's a foul." Shut up, fam. Well, you would have gone me. down in your day if, if you felt like that. Come on. How? Not even just like a little tap of the foot. That was a whole shoulder. Like, you're going to the floor, fam. Go. Speaking me. of speaking of tap of the foot, yeah. The way Van der Beek went down went <laughs> with the keeper. <laughs> Class. Yeah. Class. Now, now that one, that yeah, is he felt a bit of a touch and went down. He didn't get touched. <laughs> no one touched him. No one touched him. No one touched him. And of course, the ref made the right decision. But me, as a United fan, I see it in live play, and I'm like, that's a foul. Give the penalty. And it's only when I see the replay, I was like, ah, oh, mate, <laughs> what's going on there, Doddy? But it's football today, like. You've got to be very careful when Alisson was there. And Fabinho wasn't. And that's why he got punished. Thiago is a nasty player as well. I saw it in the Premier League and he did it again today. He's doing a lot of fouls that are just like, if you're not concentrating, you'll miss them. And sometimes the ref isn't concentrating. This is what I picked up on as we were watching this game. Like, obviously, depending on how it's going, you watch the players and, like, the sort of mentality they have and sportsmanship. Um... Manchester United has got good sportsmanship. Liverpool, zero, Absolutely zero, not. zero. Because it was you already had the first goal, and you're like, right, we're about to take out some kneecaps. Everybody get the hammers out. It was just, it was ridiculous. How are we getting like what two, three yellow cards in the first like five minutes? It was, it was just, oh. that's some shit right there. What one that got me uh, was Fabinho. Uh, Technically, Rashford's challenge on Fabinho, but then Fabinho purposely putting his leg up to spin him out into the brickwork. Are you mad? <laughs> I'm telling you, it's nasty that they're learning at that club, man. They're disgusting. Rashford. But I have to give a shout out to Lindelof because the way he yanked my guy's shirt, yeah, in front of the ref in the 80th, 88th minute, mad thing. He ate that yellow card and said, yes, please. Thank you very much. Can I have some more, sir? I have some fries with that. He took that like a man. He took that like a champ. And that's what I said. It was... Lindelof was my man of the match. <laughs> How are you gonna grab someone like the angry mother? Like, come here. Like, you zero look... fucks given whatsoever. If you look up shameless in the dictionary, it's Victor Lindelof. That was disgusting. <laughs> Me. That was. That was a. That guy is gonna score. That guy is off. He's beating me. Just yank them and out. Like you had to, you have to no, do it. We're both you going out, to, mate. You know, I had to do it to him. Like <laughs> desperate times, desperate times. Yeah, that's where Pogba's like, "Oh, I'm a bit tired." <laughs> Edge of the box. <laughs> See, and Lindelof did it in the middle of the pitch. Pogba, if you're gonna get tired, at least foul the man in the middle of the pitch. Yeah, not in the box, please. <laughs> good, good result, good result, good match. I think that is what people would have wanted to see in the, obviously the, the mm -hmm. Premier League. But I figured, yeah, I figured we'd see that more in an FA Cup match where you know it's not so much of a disaster if you lose. Liverpool did not want to lose in the Premier League, which is why they played that way. But Liverpool wanted to win this match, which is why they played this way. I feel like if you won, you pay more attention to actually like doing what you're supposed to do. You're running around, kicking people's knees in and thing. You're not paying attention to what's actually happening. 
Man's just coll- everybody was collecting yellow cards and not playing the game. <laughs> Salah's on his one scoring goals. Nobody's <laughs> helping this man. Like it's a normal fashion the war tactic, isn't it? If you hurt the other player enough times, they'll stop running it. Yeah, but then they just take out Salah, and what are you gonna do now? Well, none of you lot was paying attention, well, so well, Firmino was doing his, you know, good old false number six, no <laughs> goals, nothing. Mane causing trouble, but Wambasaka had that. Ins- oh, Wambasaka had a couple of slide tackles, picture perfect. Didn't hurt the man, but just stopped the attack. You can always trust him. Yeah. Always trust uh, Milner as well when he's just flying through the air with the greatest of ease, <laughs> flopping around like a fish <laughs> while he's doing it. <laughs> oh, babe, that, that goal. Sad. Sad, 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 sad. Milner, yeah, I'm look sorry look to sad. say. He yeah, He looked proper gutted. Some proper Maguire defending there from Milner. Absolute shambles. Just gifting Greenwood there with a the plate. Serving him. <laughs> Silver spoon. One of the funniest thing when you see the opposite team just walking away and they look so <laughs> sad. Like, this is the worst day this man has ever had. Yes. <laughs> you hate to see it. Milner doesn't get enough credit, but I think he's one of those squad players. Like he's not gonna win any Ballon d'Ors, but I think as a team, he's done so much. He's won Premier Leagues, Champions Leagues. Hey, all wait, you're, you're saying leagues, yeah? Yes. You mean league? City and Liverpool. What are you talking about? Oh, wait, he was at City as well, wasn't he? Yeah. What are you talking oh, about? I he was at City. Yeah, yeah, I I he was at City. Oh. <laughs> He's been in Liverpool for so long. <laughs> yeah, he was at City for a long time. He's a, oh, I don't know how old he is, but he's been around. No, I, I remember back in the day, like him and Gareth Barry at Aston Villa. Mm. And I know Barry went to City, and I thought Milner went to Liverpool. But obviously, he must have had a spot at City as well then. Gee, yeah, like, he went to City first. Oh, God. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean... Man of the match, you already said Lindelof. It was just too fucking for funny. the yank. The yank, like just bare <laughs> disobedience, fam. <laughs> Who was your man of the match? I'm gonna say it was Salah. It's like, even though the players, like our impact players, played well, I said I personally feel like they had some stinky performances. Whereas Salah, like overall, actually did really well for Liverpool. I'm gonna give it to Rashford actually because. He was a bully on the left-hand side. Whether it was Trent, whether it was Williams, he had so much joy getting the ball and either causing a foul or assisting someone. Sorry, Williams. Sorry. But he, he just, even when Thiago had a go, embarrassed. Fabinho couldn't keep up with him. No one else wanted anything to do with him. And I think he was really good. Like, not perfect, but I think goal, assist... Embarrassing a young de- deputant, uh, you know, like what more could you ask for? He had a really bad day, yeah, really bad day in the office. I don't think we'll see him. That's Klopp's fault. That, that is entirely Klopp's fault. Right? He, I know Henderson's still dealing with a bit of a knock, but there's other players that you can put in that position, you can yeah. play free at the back. You can make sure Trent stays there, considering that they're they're like, oh, Trent is the number one uh, right back in the world. Oh, Wan-Bissaka wishes that he can battle him for that position, doesn't he? Trent wasn't playing right back today. He was, <laughs> Who was right back? <laughs> I honestly think that Gareth Southgate should be starting Wan-Bissaka for England. I personally don't care for the national team, but I do think that Juan Bissaka is as good as Alexander Arnold, and he's even better when it comes to the defensive capabilities. Like it's night and day, not even close. He put a couple of good balls into the box today. No one was there to to get them. I think Luke Shaw should be in in that conversation as well for the left back for England as well. Absolutely, I think he's really good um, going forward as well as defending. Fernandez put a really good ball in for, for, for Cavani that just hit the post. And then he Yo. started to have a nap. What was that all about? The ball was still in play. 
I just lie down. The other thing someone was like, still in play. I yeah. jumped up like shit. <laughs> <laughs> mate, this is not your day off, son. Get back up. You're still on the clock, mate. Yeah. It's time to go. <laughs> that, that was shocking. Out of all the decisions today, that was the worst one. <laughs> to sunbathe after missing a goal. Nah, man. Can't be having that. Can't be having that. That's why Rasha didn't give him the ball. <laughs> That was after that. Like I'm not sure how McTominay finished that game. No, he, have, he, he was an absolute have. disgrace. <sighs> it was shocking. I would have taken him off at half time for Matic or Fred. He was shocking. Yeah, no, the fact that Van der Beek got taken off and McTominay didn't was astounding no. to me. He was always going to be the one taken off though, because it's Fernandez coming on. It's that position that. Yeah, but. But then Fred came on for Greenwood. I don't have any words for that. Because <laughs> Pogba went out to the wing. <laughs> Which we're I, like, oh, don't put him there. But yeah. But I, I can accept your argument because, yes, Fernandez. But when you're bringing on a CDM for a winger, yeah, you can take off McTominay. Didn't have a good game. But I think he likes that pairing of Fred and McTominay. I, I, not for me personally, maybe against Europa League op- opposition or Carabao Cup opposition, but not against Liverpool, not for me. Not me. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, we've got two league games coming up in the next week. Mm-hmm. Sheffield United on Wednesday. That would have been very confusing for Tyrone. How do we see that game going out? Sean, your prediction <laughs> I feel like we should batter them. I I know that they've been putting in the work. I know it was a tough game, but we beat them 3-2. And since then, they've gone to beat a Newcastle. But I'm, if we get anything less than 3-0, I'm going to be very upset. He's going to write a letter. <laughs> I'm going to write a strongly worded letter. <laughs> Is, is that your prediction? 3 0, yeah? Mad. Akira, your prediction against Sheffield United? Home of the league. One win in their belt. <laughs> one win in 19 games. It might be 20 if they've played an extra one. Let's have a look. <laughs> they, oh no, they've only played 19. Okay. Still 19 19 games. Oh. 19 games, one win, two draws, 16 losses. Well, they got that minus 22 gold. What's Ooh. mad is they got minus 22, but then West Brom have got minus 28. <laughs> That's <laughs> mad. Right, cool. <laughs> Can I take you down for a win then? I'm going to say, yeah, obviously I'm going to say a win, but I don't think we should count them out. I don't think you should count out any of your enemies at any point in time because you never know what's going to happen. I think because they're bottom of the league or whatever. They're going to try really hard. I think Mm. we can't give them a performance like today just because if you're trying really hard, those little opportunities when Cavani and Rashford aren't doing what they should be doing, they will take them. They're going to take every shot they can. So we're going to win if everyone's playing fucking properly. We're going to win by a lot. (laughs) (laughs) I think we'll beat them. 2-0 2-0 because I think they're too poor to beat them just 1-0. I'd be surprised if we only beat them 1-0. But I mean 1 0 is fine. Three points. That's what that's the more important thing. But I, I think will, it'll be 2-0. I, I will laugh if they score first. Genuinely. Well they did last time. They oh, like they did. <laughs> yeah. we, we beat them 3-2 in a very close match. No. <laughs> it, was, it was the same result as today. <laughs> we beat them 3-2 in a very, very close match. They will try hard. I think we'll beat They're them. going to try hard. Yeah, we've got three two for I think that's at the bottom. Uh-huh. Three points. I think we'll beat if you look at our results against the team that's at the bottom, yeah. Sheffield United beat them three two. West Brom <laughs> beat them one nil on a penalty. <laughs> you see Fulham. <laughs> Fulham. We went one nil down. <laughs> We went one nil down. We beat them two one. Come on, come on. Our results against the bottom three are not looking good. 
I mean, they're looking like the W Hotel, man. It's bare dubs all over the shop. Well, I can see the goals, so. though. They're going to give us a run for their money. Like, yeah, that's, that's right. That's Make that. the players earn it. That's what we pay them for. We're going to go out in Sheffield and beat their asses. That's what was going to happen. Oh, no, it's at Old Trafford. Well, we're going to get a home win for once. There we go. Oh, wow. <laughs> we're not home tonight, so... In the league, our home form is poor. That's what they call it, though. Sheffield are like, yes, they're at home. They shit when they're at home. <laughs> Let's fucking go. So we need that to will, be careful. That will be the team talk, word for word, bar for bar. Bar for bar. <laughs> We're gonna I'm going to be like, you're getting sued. I literally said that. <laughs> Next week on Saturday, it is the old classic, two of the most successful Premier League clubs of all time and man united have won i think 90 percent of the cups between the two is united away at the emirates oh that was me thinking it was an actual threat i would say Oh, I'm not going to say anything because that's going to get No, 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 no. no. Uh, okay, with your, pre- your predictions. When I'm going to say your truth, bro. I'm predicting a win. Calm. 2 1. I feel like I'm so torn. Like, as an ex, ex well, well, like 15 years Let's ago. Let's not talk about that. Support, <laughs> no, as a child, I support Arsenal. They are trash. We are going to win. Like we're going to absolutely body them. It's not the same. They've gone through. They're going through the dark ages now. They will see the light at some point. But today, next Saturday is not that day. Long may the dark ages of Arsenal continue. Oh, we gonna win. We gonna win. I win. Right. With City breathing down our throats, we need to win until City don't. Right. Every every match has to be a predict and a win. Because if I don't predict the win, then City are taking first, and I can't have that. Mate, City will take first if they win their game in hand. And, and they that's... should win it because I. Th- oh, who is it against? I can't even remember. I think it's a scrub team. Um, I saw it and I was like, oh no, they're definitely winning that. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, it's West Brom. <laughs> yeah, they're winning that. Come on now. It's West Brom, yeah. <laughs> not officially yet three points but they're going to get they, they got West points. Brom and then they got Sheffield United I mean is that the easiest six points that they've ever had or what man just hand them a, a check walk, for six points it's a walk in the goodness park, yeah point. Oh, they don't have Kevin De Bruyne and they don't have yeah. Aguero for now but I'm just, I, they, they're going to beat those teams it's not I mean, really performance they'll beat them but it yeah. would be nice to have like a little surprise yeah. No, no. What think, are you on? I think earlier on in the league, we've seen shop results, but I think now the teams are all stabilized. Mm-hmm. I think City will be continuing their dominance. You say that, but then in two weeks' time, they've got Burnley, the giant destroyers, and then they're playing Liverpool. So they could potentially drop six points in the following week. I don't think City will lose to Burnley. I. It's only only certain pe- only certain clubs lose to Burnley. I can't lie. Only second rate clubs that have won like one title lose Burnley. <laughs> we might be in the third act of this thing, but that's where shit ha- like shit goes down. Yeah. Like. Mm-hmm. So you don't know. The major twist is coming. <laughs> We're going to lose all four games on the road. You don't know. It's true. You never know. You never know. Yeah. Wanted to ask some quick fire yes or no questions to everyone. Oh god. Yeah. So no thought. No essays, yes or no. Here we go. Sean, we are halfway through the Premier League. Is Man United going to win the league? Yes. Akira? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I take that down, yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> We've gone through to the. Yes, of course. Yes, fam. Yeah. Pick up my chest. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time. There are a lot of things that have gone our way. I think the the moons, the planets are in line. It's going to happen. We've gone into the fifth round, I think, of the FA Cup. Mm-hmm. Got West Ham at home. Moise is coming yes. back. We're gonna. Are we gonna beat West Brom? Uh, West Ham. Oh, they might as well be West Brom. Sure. Are we gonna beat them? Of course we are. The only thing that they're good for is cleaning the change room. <laughs> I, I. Oh yeah. I have no. 
reference for this. Okay. I think it's because I, I said the carpenter would be a better manager than David Moyes. <laughs> David David Moyes is he's, he's, he's not he's not good. He's I not good. think we're going to move swiftly on, and yes, we're going to beat them. Is Man United going to win the FA Cup, Sean? Hi, Kira. Mm. Yes or no? Come on. Mm, nah. Is that a no? That's a no. I don't think they will either. I have a no too. I'm pretty sure City are still in the cup, aren't they? Yeah, of course they are. And they've draw, uh, mate. They've got a crap team. Oh yeah, they, they beat Cheltenham. <laughs> they got they, they off. Off. <laughs> nah, oh. I've run out of questions. So <laughs> there we go. It was quick. It was quick. <laughs> All we've got left is the Europa League, and I couldn't. I can't lie. I don't care about that cup. So I don't feel like um, Oli cares about it either. So. He might put Diallo out there. You never know. Oh, there is some news. Lingard's apparently been booted out of the squad. Yeah. I didn't really understand how or why. I actually didn't realise he was like with United. Like, for real. Oh, dear. <laughs> no, we just like, we Woof. haven't seen him. Woof. <laughs> haven't seen him for ages. And you know, I'm like, what? Like, Legit, I'm you're like, still here? What? <laughs> no, I didn't really turn on the lights. I'm like, oh, my guests are still here. What's going on? <laughs> like, like, it's a bit random for it to just happen now. I think Oli wanted him to go in the summer and no one wanted him. So he's he's going to get forced out. Well, where's he going to go? I don't know. I think certain clubs want him on loan to the end of the season. We'll, go, we'll see from there. But it's not looking good for the our boy. Hate to see it. Right. He has been missing. That's why I was like, wait a minute. It's, it's sad because he was going through some stuff last year as well. So his, his form has been shaky. But yeah. Last year? Oli- Last year, Andy. <laughs> yeah, the purple cat. Yeah. I don't understand why we get why we're getting rid of him. We are having some fucking shaky performances from other people. Because it's not just how bad they're doing. <laughs> they're not just sitting God. Yep. Uh, it's That's a shame. So- but that will be it, unless anyone has any final comments. I just want to know where he's going to go. As long as he's not sucking out our salaries. Ta-da, Jesse. You can go to wherever my suit went. You go get pushed out, join another team, and then bat- completely and utterly batter us at nah, some other point. Like You can go to Italy, it's fine. Simply. <laughs> She's got no <laughs> manners. <laughs> Goodbye, what? Just like... Let's weed him out. Just thank you for your service. Out the door. Not even a thank you, just... The gift card will be in the post. <laughs> you're working at a company of like 500 employees and four people sign your goodbye card. That's the energy I'm getting right now. <laughs> no, that's... No, the TV, that's the TV not... is definitely signing it. Well, exactly. Rashford is signing it. Pogba signing it. Pogba signing it, yeah. Bye, we'll say, isn't it? <laughs> One matter, we'll sign it. <laughs> One matter! <laughs> All caps. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. Yeah, but that's only four out of the. How many did you say, Kira? Like Five hundred. <laughs> the tea lady as well. So that's fine. The tea lady. Oh, yes. She's class. <laughs> that's five yard tea cakes every day. She, she did the job. She keeps it simple. No red velvet cakes over here. <laughs> she keeps it simple. And. On that note, I think we're going to end this episode of the Red Devils Advocates. Thank you so much for tuning in. You can follow us on Twitter at Red Devils Advoc or on Instagram at RD Advocate. Our pods will be on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to your podcast. So make sure you check out there if that's your thing. But hopefully next time we'll be singing about how we battered Arsenal. So take care. Stay safe. <laughs> <laughs>